You're watching BBC World News today with me, Zainab Badawi. Now, many traditional bookshops are closing down, and this time it's not the recession. The book selling industry is under a radical shake up, some say one as big as the invention of the printing press 500 years ago. It's all a gamble. Publishers are splashing huge sums on celebrity authors looking for profits, while technology is threatening to kill off the book form itself. So, what is going on? The BBC's David Hanna takes a look. The bliss of browsing quietly in a bookshop, maybe taking hours to select the volume of your choice from the thousands on display. But on a weekday afternoon, some of the biggest bookstores in central London may only have a handful of customers, and they can stroll comfortably in thousands of square feet of selling space. Many of the titles may only sell two or three copies in a year. Booksellers are paying top rents, yet might be selling just one paperback an hour. Discounting by even the biggest book chains is no match for the online sellers, especially Amazon. And the online market can offer an almost infinite back catalogue, as well as second-hand bargains. There are now even bigger challenges facing the book trade, and even the book itself as a product. Blackwell's in London's Charing Cross Road has responded by bringing together technologies both old and new with the introduction of the Expresso Book Machine. This print-on-demand device allows you to wander into the branch, bewail the absence from the shelves of the little-known text on which you had set your heart, but then call it into being. It works out at about $50 for a 300-page novel. This week, however, Amazon launched a new version of its Kindle e-reader. The new device can hold 3,500 books and has access to more than 225,000 titles. Amazon has not revealed how many Kindles it has sold, but the publishing industry has said ebooks account for less than 1% of all book sales. So perhaps the death of the book and the bookshop has been much exaggerated. And as with music, the consumer is being offered a greater and quicker access to texts. Well, to discuss all this, we're joined now here in the studio by David Taylor, president of the Lightning Organisation, which prints books on demand for publishers, and also by the author and commentator, Jonathan Gabay. Jonathan Gabay, so do you think people are going to start finding different ways, different forms of reading their books? Absolutely. It is not the death of the book. So before we all put our hands up and say, oh, no, it's the death and of the book. And hold a funeral, yes. Yeah, no, don't <laughs> hold a funeral. It's not time, because what you st it's like people saying it's the end of the quill and ink. It's not about that. Do you know what it's about? It's about the message. It's all about the message. Is it a good book? Has it got great content? If it's got great content, I don't mind whether it's going to be on an e-book or whether it's going to be in a traditional book. But I actually think that people are going to go back to the traditional book anyway at the, the end. The paper, they like the Yeah, they that love paper. that right. tactile film. What feel. do you think, David Taylor? Well, I agree, Jonathan. I think the rumours of the death of the book are grossly exaggerated. I think it's, it's an either-and world. Uh, and it's, it's an exciting time to be in publishing and book selling because... You know, these new devices like the Kindle are, are coming out and uh, allowing people to access content in lots of different formats. So it's not a replacement argument. It's far too simplistic to say that that and the e-book is going to replace the physical book. I'm going to show people what we're talking about here because this is one of those things, isn't it? So this thing here, very, very thin, has got something like six books on it. So we've got, um, well, that's Oscar Wilde there, obviously. And this is the kind of page, let me see if I can get this right here. So... Um, you press this button and you should get the page that you're reading. Well, that's the theory anyway. And that's the whole problem. <laughs> no, that, there, there that's we are. the whole problem that's the with page it. There. And so, look, you've got six books. You're going on holiday maybe away yeah. for a few weeks. You yeah. want lots to read. Isn't this handy? Uh, no. Rather than taking lots of these. Perhaps. I mean, Oscar Wilde, short no, no, book here. Perhaps it's handy. What happens if the battery runs out? Well, you, well, you can just bath. charge it. I mean, or, you're you, or you drop it in drop the bar. Your mobile phone. I mean, lots of people have cell phones and you learn how oh, to charge them. It's just like that. But you're going to be there you are on holiday sunning yourself. You don't like this. I mean, have a feel and of it. Look, yeah, look how convenient it is. But you're on holiday. Look, here I am on holiday. I'm sunning myself. You know, I can't. It's a it's you okay. Like, you want it's to okay. touch I something. Want to, I, wanna, I want this thing to turn. <laughs> yeah, I want this thing. Don't you, Phil? I think they're complementary. I think, you know, 
to, to, ha to put forward an argument, I've sat through countless seminars in the book tray the last 20 years and heard yeah. endless, um, endless presentations about the death of the, the physical book. It, it's not going to happen. These are complementary technologies. But the, the smarter publishers yeah. are engaging with both of them so and it's putting one or them the into other. the market. But a lot of people, people like this. They say, you know, look, it's quite a green option because you don't have to cut out all those trees for the paper and you don't have to have all that yes. storage of books collecting dust. I mean, you don't a like this. Option. Jonathan, how many yeah. books have you got in your, in your house on shelves? And I bet you have haven't opened some of them for years. Oh yes, it's the, it's the, it's the classic, <laughs> isn't it, of the brief history of time. Who actually has gone past the first, I, I don't know, to, 20 I page pages? Third, I got to page 32. Did you? You're yeah. a good man. <laughs> and you also want to talk about, you want to talk about green stuff. Go to a company like his because what they're doing is they're, they're only There's a lot of promotion on this. Oh, yeah. oh, right. but, okay. but it's true. But it is true. They'd only publish a book as you as you actually want it. But it's, as I go back to what I said before, it's yeah. not about the book alone. It's about I think what people want today. Yeah, what they want is that they want to go into a bookshop that's going to give them more than just the book. The core book is what's going to draw them in. All right. But it's everything around it. Here's one of the ironies of this as well. I mean. That technology there that's powering the Kindle and the technology that powers print on demand is a digital technology. Mm -hmm. uh, and digital technology has often been put forward as a means of the book disappearing as a physical object. Mm. In fact, it's deliciously ironic that actually the reverse is happening. And print on demand, because it allows a book to be published when there's a sale rather than to be published speculatively and then people try to sell it, is allowing many millions uh, of books to be sold. So that works rather than yeah. just printing hundreds and well, then pulping right. and hundreds that is, as well. So you think the bookshop mm. will remain, do you, David oh, Taylor? Oh, yes, yes. I mean, well, I'm, but I'm, the independent yeah. ones are already having a tough time, aren't the they? Indep I mean, I was used to be in bookselling. Um, the independent bookselling sector has been struggling for some years, mainly mm. because of the netbook agreement going, the rise of the internet, the supermarkets. But ironically, in the last uh, couple of years, the independent sector has seen a real surge in, in, in popularity and in, and in interest, and the smarter so the independent booksellers will oh, survive. survive. And Jonathan, do you think that the bookshop will survive because it will somehow embrace these the new technologies? The bookshop yeah. will embrace these, t uh, these new technologies because what they're going to be doing is that they're going to be selling the book, which is going to be the core item, and they're going to be selling things around the book. So they're going to be selling things like podcasts. They're going to be selling things like seminars. So you can have a seminar with the author of the book, and so on and so forth. So the bookshop becomes a multimedia a multi-brand experience, if you wish, and that's where I think it's going. And I think that there's room, not just for the big bookshops, but for the small bookshops who are organically going to get people to come back again and actually love books. So you agree on everything. You say there's room for both of these. The independent booksellers can still survive yeah. Yeah. and uh, bookshops can still survive. Absolutely. So uh, Absolutely. death knell of nothing. Definitely. Oh, Dad, you're both agreed on all that. Jonathan Gabay and David Taylor, gentlemen, thank you thank both you. very much.